Perhaps you're looking for some unique materials. Perhaps you'd rather not farm up a hundred iron ingots just for a little project that you're working on the side. Maybe you need a hundred revive feathers because you and your crew suck. <laughs> or maybe you just need a hundred gacha coins because you feel like playing the lottery and seeing what happens. Whatever it might be, the merchants probably have you covered. Let's check it out. Start off by finding yourself a marketplace. No, there aren't any actual marketplaces in game, but there are merchants that travel around the islands. So what you can do is weaken the merchant just like you would any other living creature and catch them with a gotcha ball. Once you've obtained a merchant, build yourself a breeder, throw the merchant on the left side of the breeder and anything else on the right side does not matter what level. Then it's going to start breeding some merchants for you. I would try and get around 10 to 20 per island level. That'll give you various items and opportunities for finding what the merchants may have to sell. So once again, the merchant selling will depend on what island level they are on, not what level the merchant is. So now we're going to take a look at islands level 1 through level 7 and see what are some general or maybe some rare items that the merchants can sell. Oh, all right, everybody. We are going to start off on the level one island. Happens to be resident island, so I threw down a bunch of merchants. Let's see what they have to sell. Sweet, so again, level one island, you can get here pretty quick. They got tons of materials, just about any you can find on any standard animal, uh, with varying enchants. So you can definitely get some interesting builds going by visiting the merchants. Uh, sometimes these small potions can be pretty useful in the early game. 80 heals, so that's pretty nice. They get a short cooldown. We can also find some not so hard to farm materials, but in quick stacks. So you don't have to go to your smelter and smelt all your iron, but this way I got a quick 100 iron ingots that I can devote to whatever side project I may be working on. Maybe it's building a base or just getting some other minute things up and going, like your breeding station and so forth. We can also find titanium axe here, like a six star axe on a level one island can be pretty useful for getting ahead of the curve. The monster balls can be a big benefit, so find a couple merchants, get an easy 100 stack here and there. It's gonna cost you right under 100k, so if you have any sort of elephant ivory or peach farm set up, this should be no problem. If not, go through some dungeons, sell a couple swords, you'll get there before too long. The stakes, these can also be super helpful. It gets to be a bit pricier up there, so once you figure out a good selling method, again, the elephant farm is great early game because you can get some XP from killing and you get all their ivory, which sells for a decent sum. We also have some other early game items here. So the needles, these can be decent for making some staffs or the bow with spear. Again, different feather opportunities. We get some salads, so if you need some more mana, the cotton canvas, great, and an amulet here and there. So we got quite the variety. We even got steel ingots. So you don't necessarily have to spend so much time trying to gather iron. Like you can just find 100 stack of steel ingots. It's a little pricey, but that way you can get that third age evolution pretty quickly. So not too shabby. So that's what you can expect from some merchants on the level 1 island. Pretty decent basic materials, they got some varying enchants on some of the standard monster materials like your talons, your fangs, your leather, things of that nature. They got your gotcha balls, makes it a bit easier to go catching some creatures, iron ingots, steel ingots, some food. So level 1 island merchants can be a pretty good start, I'd recommend on the early game. Breed a couple, get yourself started up, makes it a bit easier. He goes, yes, very nice. We are now on a level two island. Let's see what the merchants have for sale. Again, merchant level does not matter, only the island level that you were on. So yeah, we got some pretty similar stuff to level one. We got a few more bows, weapons here. We still got the monster balls and random enchants on feather stack. So again, if you're looking for easy feathers, 60K for 100 stack, you can get some pretty cool variants from the merchants. More ingots, silver. Antidote, that can be super helpful. 
and the varying fish again you can get some interesting enchants on the fish see got a blue enchant here and there most of them are common some greens too shield more pickaxes check one more guy cool more monster balls Fenrir bird feathers that's pretty cool that's a good one All right, maybe one more. Again, nothing too great. So yeah, gorilla bird feather. Interesting. Level two island. Not too shabby. Pretty similar to the level one island. Uh, maybe a little higher weapons or maybe a little higher gathering tools that you can collect from there. So once again, set up your merchant farm and hop islands. On to a level three island. Now this is where things start to get interesting. Make sure you got a good stack of cash. Nice. So once again, we got more ingots, no fairy fangs. We're starting to get some more interesting materials here and there. The killer bow. Here's the Sagittarius bow. You definitely don't want the sheep's enchant. Whatever to this thing, Schwarl Lancer Vizendir. Wish I could speak better. <laughs> you can buy yourself a hundred stack of arrows. We got fire, and at some point we'll also find some toxic arrows, some spears here and there, so some pretty cool stuff. We already got some eight star weapons on a level three merchant. All right, so we got some two handers up in here. Hey, there's some poisonous arrows. Don't get cracked, that'll be bad. Uh, but right under 90k, so not bad, but we can find some toxic arrows, even better. You can also find the poisonous vials and the toxic vials as well. Hey, look at that. Some platinum. Nice. We got some more ominous pilaf. Need some more food opportunities. 374k. Make sure you got some money. All right, cool. So yeah, you can find the poisonous vials. You can also find the toxic vials that are just like this. And again, potential for random enchant on there. Punching bang. Cool. Hard-headed sword. That's pretty good for defense. Defense goes a long way in this game. So yeah, some decent opportunities. I think we can do better. Hey, so we got a hundred stack of batteries. Pretty nice. Ingots, we got firecrackers. And look at that, more scorching fox mask. That's pretty dope. I mean, more scorching is nothing great. And it is the magic variation, so that it can be cooler. But um, hey, there's a fox mask for you. You can also get the fox mask with the EI slash attached to it on a level three or level four island. So again, Lots of neat items, materials, weapons you can collect from merchants. Nope, we just talked to you. You're already drowning. <laughs> they will drown themselves, be careful. So level three island merchants, guys, good place to start. I would probably make this and level four island have the most merchants. I have found the most variants among the level three and level four island smith merchants. So yeah. Pretty good time. Let's go check out level four. So to make the process a little easier on yourself, you can always set up a merchant zoo, make a couple pens or cages for them. That way you're not double checking each guy. So we are on a level four island now. Let's see what the merchants have to sell. We got some seeds we can work with. So quick and easy way to get much closer to that peach seed. Nine star is going to be a much better start than working with apple seeds. We got some hamburgers. Very nice. Some nine and 10 star swords. So that's looking pretty good. Gorilla. So we can get some platinum bows here with some unique enchants. That way we can use that to craft a pretty sweet killer bow. What else you got? All right, here we go. So level four island. This might be a bit easier to find your arrows, but we have a hundred stack of raw poisonous arrows. And we got a hundred stack of hermit toxic arrows. Pretty sweet. The enchants that are on the arrows only apply to your character if you are currently wielding a bow. Similarly, you can have a bow equipped and a shield equipped, but the shield stats will not attribute to your character until you unequip the bow. Looks like we can get a platinum shield here. Again, some decent weapons, some decent food to work with, and... All right, a mill, it's a little bit pricier, but up the magic attack, lasts for a good three minutes. That's, that's a pretty solid meal. I'll take it. And of course, the punching bags. Those are always good for testing damage, or I don't know, having a good time. 
Nice Sagittarius bow. We got some more arrows, so you can easily stack up on a bunch of toxic arrows on a level four island. We even got donuts. Look at that. 75 to attack and magic attack base stats. That's pretty dope. Last three minutes. 3.5 mil. I'll take it. Not too shabby. You can even get your platinum axe here. Talk about skipping some steps. Dope. All right, what else you got? One of these bad boys will sell us 100 stack of dashboards, and that's just a good time. We got some diamond ingots. Nice. More poisonous arrows. <laughs> hey, bud. Thanks for the shoulder. Training dummy, bows. Hey, there's our dashboard. So for a whopping... 4.6 mil. You can have yourself a hundred sack of dashboards and fuck with your friends who are AFK. <laughs> so level four island merchants, guys, they got a pretty good stash. This is probably your best bet to find your poisonous or toxic arrows. Again, you can get a hundred sack of dashboards here, some pretty decent food and some eight, nine, and maybe even some 10 star weapons as well as some gathering tools. So honestly, guys, your level three and your level four island merchants will go a long way in kickstarting your experience in Craftopia or just helping to provide some of those materials that you don't necessarily want to spend time grinding, especially when they're just going to be used for a side project or mass producing, I don't know, base materials, walls, floors, slopes, things of that nature. So anyways, on to level five. Now on to our level five, six, and seven islands. Level five and six tends to be a lot of palladium, level seven even so. Level seven tends to give us some pretty decent food. So we'll quickly browse through level five and level six island merchants, see what we find. Again, some more decent food, some high level star weapons, some hot dogs. So if you need to make some dog chow because your Anubis is way too high of a level for you to kill now, Come buy a hundred stack of hot dogs. You can find these on, I think, level four through level seven island merchants. And yeah, that'll definitely kickstart your adventure for making a ton of dog chow. And again, more seeds. So this hundred stack of 12 star seeds give you a pretty good opportunity of getting some decent fruit or vegetables to, again, kickstart your seed breeding adventure to get to those peaches. Fast eating pot of food, so we got 11 star meal here, not too bad, 12 star staff, we're getting places. You can even buy a hundred stack of bargain mechanical parts in case you're really wanting to work on that tank. It's a bit pricey at 15 mil, but they're there. And guys, nothing here that I would care to search for that I wouldn't be able to find on a level 7 island. So, On to the next one. Now, for the level 6 island, again, we're going to find a lot of palladium here. You might be able to find a 12-star meal or two, but it's going to be pretty generic. Solid here and there. We got some higher-starred weapons. Nothing you want to be able to find on a level 7 island, so if you have access to a level 7, you might as well forget about level 5 and level 6 island merchants, because you'll find just about everything you need on level 7. But if you care to search, you can find some interesting stuff here and there. Lots of hot dogs. <laughs> and more palladium. Oh, we found some cheese. Cheesecake, that is. 500 grand, not too big a deal. So yeah, guys, um, for level five and level six islands, honestly, you're not gonna find anything that's dramatically different than what you'll find at level seven island. But if you do want some extra opportunities, you can always set it up. And I imagine when a new island level releases, these may change up a little bit. So might be worth setting up for future instances. On the way to a level 7 island. Last but not least, our level 7 island merchants. Again, you're going to find a lot of palladium here. But you're also going to find some 12 star meals. Can be super helpful for keeping up with the game content without having to constantly farm up new food. Uh, or maybe some ingredients you're not even sure where to get. Hey, we got some old sushi. So this is great too. You can find sushi on even a level 4 all the way up to level 7 island. Look how amazing that is. 12 stars only lasts for 30 seconds, but adds 300 to your base attack and base magic attack. And adds 50 to your defense? My god. 
If you're in an Anubis battle, this thing's OP. So if you got two different styles of sushi, go hand in hand so you can pop those back to back, would be outstanding. And then, hey, we found some jambalaya as well. So for the sushi, max stack, 1.3 mil. Not terrible if you got peaches. For the jambalaya, uh, 600 health, 200 mana. That's pretty helpful. Adds 25% of a stamina bar, so that's pretty helpful. Maxing that out, 1.4 mil. Jambalaya, try not to find the old, but find some sushi. And yeah, you'll be off to a good start. That's some definitely top tier food from a level seven island merchant. Now you can find some of like the crab rolls or some other different foods. Um, and remember, if a food actually has an enchant that will apply to you, it will say applied to consumables only. If it's grayed out like this, it doesn't affect you at all if you're eating it. And this dude's got a bunch of salads. So that, guys, was the level 7 island merchant farm. Again, this is probably going to be more worth your while than set up a level 5 or 6, but hey, you might as well set them up everywhere because I'm sure future updates will start to divide up what the merchants sell a bit more and more. I already have seen tons of palladium. Anyways, go to level 7 island merchant to collect your 12 star meals and maybe some sushi. Go to your level 4 island merchants to collect some arrows, some poison or toxic variety, Collect some vials of the poison or toxic variety. You can get your gotcha coins. You can get your dashboards. You can get a battery stack. You can even get a hundred stack of Phoenix revive feathers, giving you a little extra opportunity for keeping you and your crew alive during those difficult boss battles. So be on the lookout for some good food, level seven. Be on the lookout for some good materials and usable items, such as arrows or the dashboards or the batteries or whatever else you may find. And guys, if you'll find anything that I missed from any of the merchants, please let me know down below. There are a couple things that I have found that I didn't find in this video. They are quite rare, so I'll try and throw them in wherever we find a spot. So. Thanks again guys for tuning in, I hope this was useful for at least understanding the versatility or how useful the merchants can be in the world of Craftopia. So, thanks for tuning in everybody, good luck, enjoy the ride, and I'll catch you all at some point. Peace out y'all.